Soaring along the top of the legendary Blue Ridge Mountains is the only way to really appreciate the breathtaking views of the Shenandoah Valley. I'm in the US state of Virginia, which with Maryland and Washington DC make up the capital region of the United States. And this is a Skyline Drive, one of many scenic byways that take you through some of the most impressive landscapes in the country. But sometimes it's just nice to get out of the car and stretch your legs. Skyline Drive is the road that runs behind me here, starts in Front Royal and runs 105 miles down to Waynesboro. And in between there's 75 overlooks that show views from the valley and also for the Piedmont on the east side. And then along the way you'll find camping, lodging, gift shops and hiking trails. Now, Debbie, we're in the beautiful Shenandoah National Park and the scenery here is absolutely breathtaking. Tell me a little bit about the area. What, what, what options do you have here if you decide to park your car and come off the Skyline Drive? Well, we have 500 miles of hiking trails, so people come from all over the place to hike in the park, including 101 miles of the Appalachian Trail. This it's is like we see for miles. <laughs> it's the Black Rock Summit, and yes, you can see for miles. You're overlooking the Shenandoah Valley, and specifically the town of Luray. And if you look over into that dip, we call that a gap, and that's where um, Highway 211 crosses over into the town of Newmarket. Wow, you're quite lucky working here every day. Yes, I'm very blessed. <laughs> <laughs> if you're coming to Shenandoah National Park and you're going to drive the Skyline Drive, plan to take some time. It's not a highway. The speed limit is 35 miles an hour and that's for safety of other visitors for, and for yourself and also wildlife. The wildlife roams free through the park and they can cross the road at any time. The most popular animal in the park that you're going to see lots of most likely is the white-tailed deer and here at Big Meadows we have a high concentration of the white-tailed deer. Nobody really knows how the Big Meadows were formed. There's a couple of estimated guesses. One theory is that it might have been a lightning strike that burned off a large area. And I know that the settlers, when they first came, they did burn it off to um, use it as grazing. And the Park Service now, we keep it open ourselves with a rotating schedule of burning and mowing. Back on the road, and as you wind your way along the Skyline Drive, the exquisite scenery that unfolds before you gets ever more dramatic and colorful as you peer out over the valley below. And it was in the Shenandoah Valley that back in 1878, tinsmith Andrew Campbell with three other men and his nephew Quint happened upon a limestone sinkhole blowing out cold air. The men dug away and soon discovered the largest series of caverns in the east of America. The caverns were made over a period of about 450 million years. It started as an inland sea here where the Shenandoah Valley currently exists. At that point, there were a lot of ant, uh, plants and animals that had started to die, and they floated to the bottom of the sea. And over millions of years, over a lot of pressure, it created an inner bedrock. Well, when the earth was still forming and the mountains came up, it brought the bedrock with it. At this point, whenever it would rain, the water would mix with carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. When it came down, it was almost like an acid rain or a mild carbonic acid. It slept into the soil and started to erode away the weaker parts of the rock, leaving the stronger parts behind. The stronger parts are now the ceilings, walls, and floors that we see today. Now, this is one of the most beautiful areas of the cavern. You can see the stalactites coming down from the ceiling. Some of them are thousands of years old. But what's all the more impressive is it is actually an optical illusion. There aren't any stalagmites, nothing growing out from the ground. But because the water is so clear, it's providing a perfect mirror image, which I'm just about to ruin for you. We get visitors from all over the world, about half a million visitors a year. When they come down, the Dream Lake area is definitely one of the favorite spots to see on tour. There's so many oohs and ahs and wows when they walk through. Um, when you come down here, there's so many different things that you can discover, and there's no way you can find it all in just one trip. Now, you might be wondering why an organ is here in these caverns, but each key is connected to one of the stalactites, and when I hit a key, you can actually hear the stalactite. Now that's the crystals within that stalactite moving and that sound is being amplified throughout the cave. So I really am playing the stalactites. Well, what an amazing place. It was the thing I was most looking forward to doing on my travels and it has certainly lived up to the hype. Who'd have thought I'd be playing an organ in the middle of a cave? But not all the history along the Skyline Drive is quite as old as this. 
Just a little further south along the byway near Charlottesville awaits Monticello, the 5,000-acre plantation home of Thomas Jefferson, third president of the United States and author of the Declaration of Independence. Well, Monticello went through a number of different phases over the years. Um, it started off a lot smaller than it is today. Um, through Jefferson's lifetime, he continued to work on it and restore it. Uh, Palladio was a major influence for Thomas Jefferson, but he also added some of his own um, architecture and, and ideas. And it's a very um, structured building. There's a lot of symmetry here. What does that tell us about him? Well, Thomas Jefferson was a man of books. Um, he loved to read. Um, he also loved to take the temperature. He was very punctual. He was always on time. He kept everybody on his schedule. So there's a lot of things you can really take from looking at Monticello. Uh, we consider it the three-dimensional autobiography of Thomas Jefferson. And a tour of the plantation itself, especially the kitchen garden in which Jefferson cultivated his reputation for being a bit of a green-fingered whiz, is a must. The house is a fine example of Roman neoclassicism. It's been restored to its early 19th century glory and it's well worth spending some time here just to breathe in the history of the place. Then there's the exhibition space and recently opened visitor centre, which all revealed Jefferson to be a true polymath, a great leader and a passionate advocate for the aspirations of a new America. Virginia's beautiful Skyline Drive is a real hit with visitors. I mean, excellent company having done it. America's First Lady, Michelle Obama, has actually done this journey twice already. But if there's plenty of gas still left in your tank once you arrive at Monticello, you can continue southwards along another of the capital region's scenic byways, the Blue Ridge Parkway.